Sex is one of God's holiest and most beautiful gifts to humanity. It's a tough one. Oh, is that for me? <laughs> <laughs> um, there have been wars started by sexual desire. And love is truly expressed when you offer. Lust is when you take. So often as Christians, um, we adopt the worldly understanding of love, right? Versus the godly understanding of love. Just pornography generates more money in North America than the MLB, NHL, NFL, and NBA combined. For our youth that are struggling, mm. the feelings of guilt, the feelings of shame. I think that part of this podcast is sitting down with our fathers as if they are our friends. They can be open about these things and we don't need to be ashamed. So this is the point where you can actually you know, look to the audience, the shame, the guilt, the addiction, those who are struggling, those who have tried and failed. We're all men. We've all gone through teens. We've all gone through all the hardships. What, what can you say? What, what is the, the way through this war, this fire that builds inside you know, our youth and, and those who are even married and aren't youth anymore but struggle? I think I would start by saying that this is not you. Your sin is not you. Mm. Your sin is apart from you. Your sin could be healed. If St. Moses the Strong was able to find his purity again, if St. Mary of Egypt, this wonderful saint, was able to find her purity again to the point that she was floating when she was walking, Right? It gives us an understanding of the power of God to bring back chastity once again within us. It is not us. Once we are baptized and the image of God is renewed within us, everything that we do as sin is almost just like dust. Right, so so it's just we go, we repent, we confess, we partake of the Eucharist. Obviously, it's it's a bit more complicated than that, but it's almost like that, right? So so it's not who we are. Sometimes these sins, the problem with them is that we allow them to identify who we are, and we see this often in sexual deviances, right? So people talk as if this is who I am, and and. And their identity becomes their sexuality. No, your identity is that you are the daughter of Christ or of God. You are the son of God. So this is definitely where I would start. Um, the one thing I want to add, however, is to run away from this sin as much as we possibly can. Um, maybe we can discuss the hows Right, how we can run away from this sin a bit, if you don't mind. Um, I think a big part of it is to really try to avoid the temptation altogether. Right? Sometimes we put ourselves in situations where I am tempted by something, right? and instead of shutting it down very quickly and very aggressively with this holy anger that God has built in me to say no to sin and to say no to the devil, I just allow, you know, the devil to, to, to or allow like him to open the door. I, I actually open the door for sin a bit and then, you know, it becomes a very, very difficult fight with sin. If I am wise enough and if I'm smart enough and if I'm strong enough to avoid the temptation altogether, I'll find that I'll do much better because I will not have within me this back and forth with sin. And the more that I allow the thought to grow in me, the more it becomes harder to fight. And evidently, I end up falling. I think the, the, the message that Father is giving right now is so important to so many of our young people who are carrying that shame and that guilt that you speak of, Paul. Um, you are not the sum of your sin. You are not simply the accumulation of your mistakes or your addictions and your passions. Your identity is in Christ and in Christ alone. And so when you give, give yourself over to the whispers of the devil, 
that wants to convince you that there's no hope for you, that you fought this for so long, that you even hate the fact that you have this addiction to pornography, that you have this addiction to masturbation, that you have no idea what to do about the fact that you keep falling into one um, adulterous relationship after another, this has nothing to do with your potential. St. John Chrysostom says the statement that is so deeply profound. He says, real repentance can turn every sinner into a saint, every harlot into a virgin. Hmm. This idea of being renewed is real. We believe in a God who makes all things new. Every day is an opportunity for me to say, I'm his again. Don't, don't focus on how much you fall. Focus on getting up. It, Pope Shenouda used to say this beautiful statement. He says, when you meet with God, he won't ask you how many times you fell, but rather he's going to ask you, why didn't you get up? Was my mercy and my love not evident to you? Why did you stay down? So if we keep fighting, keep struggling, if we run, like Father is suggesting, that we recognize the pitfalls, if, if, if lust is being whispered to me through the music I listen to, through the things that I decide to watch, the conversations I have at work or at school, if I am simply replaying uh, images that I have once upon a time allowed to enter into my soul and I'm fantasizing about those things and that's what I'm indulging on, if I don't break those cycles, then I'm not getting up, I'm staying down. There is always hope for every person. And I think it's extremely important for us to recognize that the church has placed the saints before us. Why? Because they are, they are perfect icons of God's love and mercy. When you look at St. Moses the Strong, when you look at St. Mary of Egypt, when you look at St. Augustine, when you take a look at all of these holy men and women who struggled, we didn't play, make the icons out of them because they were perfect, but because they struggled and in Christ, they were victorious. We can do the same. Can I chime in on this? Mm-hmm. Another nice quote from Sir John Chrysostom, he says that when you fall, this is not a cause for sadness. Mm. But what is a cause for sadness? Is that when you remain in the fall. Right. And right, and this is the whole difference. When the devil steps in when you fall, right? You're trying to combat this passion, and the devil steps in and says, You fell. You're no good. You're not like those Christians. You're not like those saints. Christianity is not meant for you. You're not like those guys, right? And then he leads you to despair. But the reality, and then he continues and he says, this, when you fall, this is something that is human. Mm. It's part of the weakness of your nature. But if you remain fallen, now this is devilish. Yeah. Which changes everything, right? So, so the idea is if I want to get rid of this sin, and because there is deep addiction, I shouldn't be overwhelmed with negative emotions when I fall. I need to try to put things into perspective. Understand that the devil is a liar and the father of all liars. And I understand that he's talking to me in that way to put me down for me not to get up again. But God will never talk to me this way, like Father Anthony was just saying. He would never talk to me this way. So, so we recognize right away it is the devil, it's not God. And if I recognize this, then I need to get up. And if I put things into perspective, if I realize that through my struggle, because this is the main key to spiritual life, is to struggle, to do what is good and struggle against sin. And if I have been struggling, let's say, for a week or two weeks, and I haven't fallen at all, I fell one day, regardless of the sin. But I get back up, and I fight another week, I fall again. I get back up. I fight another two weeks. So if I take a step back and look at that month, hey, I fell three, four times. But I used to fall 10, 15 times. That's huge, right? So, so if we're able to take the amount of falls and increase the distance between them, that means we are progressing towards sainthood. Like the shackles of sin are being removed from us through the struggle that we, we give and through the grace of God. And if, if, forgive me, but if I may, also the amount of time that you're staying up is even longer. You know, because if you stay resurrected then it, and you're not remaining in the fall, that's the most important part, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. There's actually, 
There is a lie that so many of us believe that is whispered to us by the devil, which is, and we, we're, as human beings, we love to count, right? We love to have like a really hot streak of, like, <laughs> it's been 30 days, it's been 60 days, it's been a year, right? Uh, so what does the devil do? As soon as he does manage to trip you up and you fall, he immediately hits you with, it's all lost. Everything mm-hmm. is lost, yeah. right? And now you got to restart, you got to rebuild, which is absolutely silly. And the image I want people to adopt is when you're running a marathon, if you're at the front of the race, so let's say you're running a 40 kilometer marathon. I don't even know if that's a thing because clearly I don't <laughs> run marathons. But <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> but let's, let's say it's a 40 kilometer marathon. And at the 30th kilometer, for whatever reason, you trip up and fall. There is no judge that jumps out of the bushes and says, ah, you fell, it's over, go back, restart. 30 kilometers are lost, go back, start line. Nobody does that. The moment that you get up, the very next step you take is towards the 31st kilometer. Mm. Nothing is lost. If we could just stop believing his lies and recognize that Christ is saying, if you get up right now, the very next step that you take is going to be towards yet another step towards a victory. But what do we do? We say, ah, I fell, I messed up. My next confession's in two weeks. I'm going to live it up from here until my next confession. Worst decision ever. It's horrible. I'm going to indulge. People do that with their diet. I broke my diet. Well, until I restart a new one, I'm just going to binge. <laughs> Eat whatever I want. That is such a horrible, horrible understanding of what it is that you're supposed to do. You fell. Get up. And once you've gotten up, then like you said, this is where you begin to yet again live the life of victory and resurrection. Mm. I think... It- in like a layman's term, the thought process there is, I'm going to have to go to confession anyways. I'm down. I'm dirty. I won't be cleansed again until I re- get my absolution and, and, and confession, all that. So the thought process is that the devil puts in your head is, well, until you get that absolution, you're filthy anyways. You, know? you might as well. You might yeah, as well. Which but is, but uh, that's insane. Like, like that, that's insane. So we have to, can I, can I say a story that maybe can summarize how big of a lie this is. Uh, so there's a story in the Desert Fathers where a monk asks his spiritual father to speak to him about sin. So he tells them, he tells him, go gather your brothers, the monks. And they start to take a walk, right? And then as they walk, they see a small plant. So he tells the monk, uproot this plant. So the monk is like, okay, whatever. Like he takes the plant, he throws it out. They continue walking. He tells him, see that small tree? Uproot the small tree. He's like, what? He's like, uproot the tree. So they go, they get like wh- whatever, and, and they start digging, like, and the other monks help him, and they uproot the tree. It took a lot of effort. It was obviously a smaller tree. Then, then he tells them, what does this have to do with sin? He's like, just relax, come. <laughs> <laughs> I love the desert puzzles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of pain and suffering, yeah. but there's always a point at the end. Yeah, yeah. they're so chill. Yeah. <laughs> um, they continue walking, and now he sees a huge tree. Obviously, deep roots. He asks him, uproot this tree. He's like, what do you mean? Or like 20 guys trying to uproot the other tree took forever. What do you mean? And he goes, this is how sin is like. When you allow sin to continue growing in your life, it becomes this humongous tree. In the beginning, it's a very small plant. You easily uproot it. And that's what happens. So when the devil tells us, okay, you know, binge in that sin, right? then what you're doing is that you're actually increasing the addiction within you, right? Another imagery is that you are digging a deeper hole under you, right? And then you have to get out of this. So something to definitely keep in mind. Also, sometimes, like, just one thing I want to chime in as well, uh, to add to what Father Anthony said and you, Paul, said as well, about how we feel bad when we fall, uh, sometimes I think this stems out of pride. At least that's what St. John Chrysostom seems to say. He says that when we fall, we're so shocked that we fell, as if, hey, how come I didn't get 100%, Mm. right? And as if I'm perfect, and therefore, if I'm not getting 100%, then let me, you know, again, binge in that sin. And we have to recognize that we, we are human we are weak and therefore that's why we cling to god and our hope is in him that's awesome 